Hello and welcome back to this video. Today we're going to take a look at Job Runner, an alternative to things like Spring Quartz or even maybe something like Spring Batch. But without further ado, let's dive in. So let's start with a little comparison. This is a graphic I showed you in one of my other videos. This is how Spring Batch basically works. We have a job launcher, we have a job. Very important, we have steps. So uh, there is something in between that is called a step that can be a single line. Uh, of a file or of your database and then it has a reader a processor and a writer and spring batch already has a lot of implementation for this reader and writers like csv like database like xml like other stuff this is very very powerful the question is do we need all of this complexity all of the time and what if if we have something else like we want to use it with Quarkus, or if even if we don't want to use a JDBC database or something like MongoDB. And this is where Job Runner comes to the rescue. So from a dependency perspective, it's pretty easy. We need this one dependency, which is called Job Runner Spring Boot 3 Starter 6.3.0. Um, and for Quarkus, there is something similar. You can find all of that on the web page of Job Runner. Job Runner is made by a very cool and energetic guy. He's called Ronald. Um, yeah, there are a lot of videos even from Spring IO. So I guess Spring and Job Runner are good friends here. So yeah, back to the dependencies. So we all we currently need is this dependency. Then we are using Spring Boot Starter Data JDBC, something I wanted to present in a video anyway. This is a lightweight alternative to Spring Data JPA, which still gives us repository abstraction. And later on, we might even take a look into MongoDB. So, but basically, this is all we need here for now. Then, of course, uh, as we are dealing with data in the database, we also have flyway in place and we have some tables that are created in a separate schema. So how does it look like? Well, we just need a simple class that's a standard command line runner from Spring, nothing special here. And then we have these commands, which are called background job or background job request that are from org job runner. So the most simple thing we can do is say, background job and queue. And we provide this a lambda, a so-called job lambda. And this simple job is just, just a simple pojo. So there is nothing special here, no coupling with job runner. It's just a generic pojo. In this case, it's a spring component, to be honest. It has a run method. It can also be called Mickey Mouse and it just does logging and that's it. And that's already one of the nicest things here. So. Um, there is no coupling with the underlying framework. So if we start our job launcher, you would see there are other things that uh, will be executed. Then what will happen? So I should get my up and running from a background job and the other things that are scheduled. So that's the simple, most simple thing like this. If we have more complex stuff, uh, and more complex stuff in this case means um, Job Runner is also Spring Native compatible, which is very nice. But for that, we have to change it a little bit. Instead of having a POJO, we need to have a so called job request. That's a simple class that just implements an interface and it returns a so called job handler. Return this class, and this is mostly just our job. This job again has to implement one simple interface, which is job request handler, and that's it. So a little bit more coupling to the underlying job runner for the benefit of having a Spring Native support, but honestly, not too much because it's only this job request class, and then it's this handler. And the handler, again, is besides this interface, it's, it's just a pojo. So what does it do? This basically reads from the database writes to the database and does some conversion. So to be clear, this has nothing to do with Job Runner. This is just a simple concept of a reader, a processor, and a writer I implemented on my own. But just to give you an idea how small you can achieve the goal of executing tasks with Job Runner, um, that's 
just what you need to do. So we say NQ, we have this job request, and then we have this job. Uh, yeah, and the reader is very simple. It is just a Spring Data repository that calls find all by. We are using a stream here so um, that we can read from the database via a stream or write from the database. For this, we just need a Spring Data CRUD repository and we need this one method. And then Spring will provide a stream. We have a writer, which is just repository safe. That's already part of the CRUD repository. And we have a processor that will just take in the person from the database and convert it to um, convert it to an anonymous first name and anonymous last name. So the data in the database already looks like this. We have some Simpsons here. And with this concept, they will just be converted. Let's get back to our job launcher. Um, so if I again start my application, it should get executed pretty fast. Yeah, so I see my person, it will be anonymized. We have the anonymized data with the concept of my own reader, writer, and processor. Um, and then we have another task that's not yet showing up because I said, of course, that's also possible, schedule this task in 20 seconds. And here it is, it is the toy job. The toy job works very similar, um, but instead of reading from the database, it reads data from a CSV file. Again, this can be a single line. We can just use standard Java here, files, lines. We provided a CSV file. Again, this syntax is needed for native image support to work. And other than that, it's pretty simple. It's reading, it's processing uh, the CSV file and then writing it to the database again for Spring Data. And Spring Data JDBC um, is very powerful and yet very lightweight. There's yet one caveat. So we are just using a record here with a table annotation. Please know that this table annotation is not the Spring Data JBA table annotation. It's uh, the one from Spring Data Relational or Spring Data JDBC, but it's similar. You can give it a name, you can give it a schema, and then it will roll. What you also need, because otherwise you will run into trouble, is you will, of course, need an ID to mark the idea. Again, Spring Data, not JPA, and a version. Um, that's just a simple attribute you should have in your database anyway. If you don't provide the version, Spring Data JDBC will be confused when to update the data and when not. So just provide the version, it works. And for the ID, uh, you most likely need to generate the ID yourself. So while there is support for auto-incrementing IDs like with JPA, it's very tedious and it's simpler to just do it like you, you random ID to a string and that's it. So, but other than that, Spring Data JDBC can can do most of the stuff that Hibernate can do with little less effort, memory consumption and complexity. Um, and it's a very well fit for a batch application like this. Okay, so what else have we got? Of course, we can do more complex stuff. We can even use cron, uh, cron expressions like this. Um, you can look it up in the documentation. We can also have at job annotations, so something like this, putting on our jobs to configure stuff even further, but for the sake of the demo, I leave it as easy as this. One more, more thing to the native image support, um, we will see this later. So um, job runner also writes its metadata into the database. There still seems to be a, a minor bug with the native image support. Um, so uh, what you can also do is to have some kind of in-memory storage provider. Um, I comment this out. So this means now the data will be written to the database, but with this, the native image support will break. So if you want to have native image support, comment this in. I will create an issue at Job Runner and ask um, if we can fix that. It should be fixable pretty easy. Okay, too much babbling, I think. So um, is is there a drawback uh, in contrast to Spring Batch? Honestly, yes, because as we remember, we don't have this concept 
of the steps in between and the steps are very powerful they represent a single line and these steps can be skippable they can be retriable and stuff like this so you can operate on a single line in spring batch which you cannot in job runner because job runner always takes the whole job into account so what does it mean and what other benefits uh, does job runner have well job runner has a very nice and awesome dashboard that's giving you for free so you can go to localhost 8100 in my example then you will be created with a dashboard you can see all the jobs here you uh, see which which are succeeded if they are fails one you see the failed ones and it automatically also cleans up the jobs that are running this was a problem with spring batch in the past i don't know if it's still there so if spring data is running for one or two years it will create a lot of stuff in the database and you usually have to clean this yourself or at least this was like in the past and uh, job runner does it in auto maintenance however again the perspective here is a complete job so the complete job either works or it will fail you have no fine grain control if there is something on a single line the question is are you using this functionality in spring batch i thought i i will be using it but i wasn't using it because you have to do a lot of extra configuration on top so for a lot of things it makes sense and it's easy enough to use job runner you get the benefit of the dashboard here um, by the way you don't need to have something like spring starter web it will just work with spring boot starter and you still have a, a, a dashboard application here that's one benefit you also can have quaker support something we won't see today and um uh, it's also possible to integrate in MongoDB, which I will show you in a second. For now, if we take a look into the application YAML file, there are some things to expect here. So there are property, these two properties need to be enabled to have processing. We need to have a port for the dashboard. Um, and then there are additional properties that we might need if because we have the same situation here with as with Spring Batch that wants to create its own metadata tables in the background. Um, in this case, we might need to skip create false. So this will not create the metadata. And then we have we have some um, flags here to create a separate schema like we did do it in, in uh, Spring Batch. And we, we might also need to provide special SQLs. So now for MongoDB. So for MongoDB, we of course need an additional, additional dependency, which is called Spring Boot Data, Starter Data MongoDB. Uh, then we need to have a profile activated. So we say here MongoDB, this was previously JDBC. If we take a look here, but we want to have MongoDB and where does this come in place so there are two classes here which are a little bit of black magic uh, which basically disable the auto configuration of either mongodb or jdbc repositories um, based on the profile and then we also have another attribute which is called enable jdbc repositories consider nested repositories this is because i'm using the spring data repository here inside my class and for this nested you need this configuration so yeah we have this and we have also the mongo configuration and with this we can switch back and forth between jdbc and mongo this has nothing to do with um, job runner itself this is just so that we can use our awesome spring data abstraction to switch between mongo and jdbc job runner has its own Mongo implementation to make all the nuts and bolts and moving parts working. So, but that's all we need. So if we now run our application and I hopefully have set the right property here, let's take a look again, MongoDB. And of course we need MongoDB started. So I have started MongoDB in uh, Docker here because everything is better with Docker. We see our toy job is running. Our person job is not running and I was confused at first. Um, that's very simple because our person job needs to have data inside the database inserted demo data and these are inserted via flyway and i'm not using flyway here i'm using mongodb so for the 
a person job to work, I would have to insert data in the MongoDB. But the toy job works, that reads from the CSV file, and you see everything is working. Now let's take a look with MongoDB Compass into the database. How does it look like and what's there? So here we have core, we have our tile catalog, we have the items imported, and then we see we have a separate collection here, a separate database in MongoDB that holds the metadata of the jobs that have been imported. And that's already it. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it was a long time for the next video and I will be on vacation for the next one and a half weeks, but we will see each other again soon, I think, because Java 21 will be there in the future. Have a nice day and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.